So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Reck. I'm working in the Lung Clinic in Northern Germany and it's my great pleasure to talk to you about the Checkmate 9LA trial. The Checkmate 9LA trial was a randomized trial investigating the combination of a limited course of chemotherapy together with the immunotherapy combination of nivolumab and epilimumab as first-line treatment for patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Well, we have learned that nivolumab and epilimumab are two distinct but complementary checkpoint inhibitors, and the combination of both has shown a benefit in overall survival across various tumor entities. And in the checkmate two to seven, we have seen that there is a superiority for this combination compared to chemotherapy in untreated patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. And this efficacy was independent from the histology of the tumor. And it was also independent from biomarkers like the pdl one expression. Well, the concept of the Checkmate 9LA was to use a limited course of chemotherapy, two cycles together with the combination of nivolumab and epilimumab in order to have a fast control of tumor uh, growth while building on the long-term survival benefit of the combination of nivolumab and epilimumab. And the feasibility of this concept was done in a small phase two trial, the Checkmate 568. So in the Checkmate 9NA, 719 patients with an untreated advanced non-small cell lung cancer without any treatable oncogenic alterations like an EGF receptor mutation or ARC translocation were randomized either to the control arm. This was a histological based chemotherapy with the opportunity of a pemetrexid maintenance therapy if the patient had a non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer, or the experimental arm, which was the combination of two cycles of chemotherapy together with nivolumab and epilimumab. Treatment was given until two years. The primary endpoint was overall survival. Secondary endpoints, which were tested hierarchically, were progression-free survival and response rate. And the stratification factors were gender, histology of the tumor, and the pdl one expression status. In order to show a benefit for the primary endpoint of overall survival corresponding to a hazard ratio of 0.75, with a statistical power of more than 80%, a number of 700 randomized patients was calculated together with 402 death events. The data monitoring committee confirmed the superiority of the combination for overall survival after a pre-specified interim analysis. And as mentioned before, progression-free survival and response were tested afterwards hierarchically. The patient population was very well balanced between the both arms and the characteristics reflect the picture of an unselected non-small cell lung cancer patient population. One third of the patient had a squamous cell non-small cell lung cancer, and 40% of the patients had pdl one negative tumors. Duration of treatment was longer in the combination arm with a median duration of treatment of 6.1 months compared to 2.4 months in the control arm. 93% of the patients received the pre-scheduled two cycles of chemotherapy in the combination arm and 21% in the combination arm and 8% in the control arm were still under treatment at time of data lock. When we look on the results of the pre-specified analysis, a significant improvement in overall survival could be shown for the combination arm corresponding to a hazard ratio of 0.69. The Kaplan-Meier curves were separating early and there was no crossing of the curves. Following the statistical plan, progression-free survival and response also were tested hierarchically and were significantly improved in favor of the combination arm. With a four months follow further follow-up, a confirmation of the survival benefit and an improvement of the survival benefit was seen 
again in favor of the combination arm. Now with a hazard ratio of 0.65, with a median overall survival of 15.6 compared to 10.9 months, and a one year overall survival rate of 63% compared to 47%. The benefit in overall survival was seen across most of the investigated subgroups. There were two small groups with a limited benefit in survival, and these were the group of patients older than 75 years and the group of patients who were never smokers, and we have seen this phenomenon also in a number of different trials. On the other hand, a remarkable benefit in survival was seen in the group of patients with brain metastasis. Looking on the stratification factors, the magnitude of survival was independent from the histology. It was comparable in the group of patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer on the left side, and also in the group of patients with squamous and non-small cell lung cancer on the right side. Furthermore, when we look on the pd one expression, the efficacy was independent from the pd one expression with a hazard ratio of 0.62 for patients with pdl one negative tumors on the left upper side and a hazard ratio of 0.64 for pdl one positive tumors on the right upper side. Looking on efficacy across the different pdl one expression levels, there was a consistent benefit in survival observed. Progression-free survival as the key secondary endpoint was also improved in favor of the combination arm corresponding to a hazard ratio of 0.68 and a one-year progression-free survival rate of 33% compared to 18% in the control arm. And again, the Kaplan-Meier curves were separating early and there was a consistent improvement over time. In addition, also response was in favor of the combination arm with a response rate following independent radiological review of 38% compared to 25%. And this improvement in response also translated to an improvement of duration of response with a median duration of response of 11.3 compared to 5.6 months and a one year duration of response rate of 49% compared to 24%. Interestingly, the rate of primary progression was lower in the combination arm with 9% compared to 13% in the chemotherapy arm. 47% of the patients had a treatment-related adverse events compared to 38% in the control arm, and 16% of the patients in the combination arm had a treatment-related adverse event grade three and four, which led to discontinuation of one of the compounds of the combination compared to 5% in the chemotherapy arm. On the other hand, the rate of fatal toxicities was very low in both arms, 2%. And as mentioned before, duration of treatment was longer in the combination arm compared to the chemotherapy arm. When we look on typical chemotherapy associated adverse events, there was a reduction of certain chemotherapy associated adverse events in the combination arm where the patients only got two cycles of treatment in particular, when we look on adverse events like chemo, like neutropenia, anemia, or thrombocytopenia. When we look on the picture and the distribution of immune-related adverse events, the results were very similar to the results of the Checkmate 2 to 7. There were no new immune-mediated adverse events observed, and the majority of immune-mediated adverse events was mild to moderate grade 1 to 2. And the most frequent immune-mediated adverse events was skin toxicity, followed by endocrine and GI immune-mediated adverse events. So in summary, the Checkmate 9LA met its primary endpoint of significant improvement of overall survival corresponding to a hazard ratio of 0.69 in the interim analysis. A confirmation and improvement of all efficacy endpoints was seen with a four month longer follow up. The benefit or the magnitude of the effect was seen across all patients' characteristics 
it was independent from histology and it also was independent from the PDL1 expression status. There were no new safety signals and with the early separation of the survival curves and the reduction of the primary progression rates, the concept of an early disease control by a limited cause of chemotherapy was validated. So in summary, looking on the results of the Checkmate 9LA, now we have a very attractive and active new treatment opportunity available for first-line treatment for, of patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Thank you.